All right. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Do you all know why you're here? I'm guessing you're here because your timetable said that you have to be here today uh, in this very room to talk about the aerospace field course. Have you talked to your friends in the third year about the flight test course yet? Have they said anything about it? No? Perfect. We want to keep the element of surprise. So, as part of your second year, uh, you are going to be doing this summer a flight test course. Um, this is a field course, first and foremost, where we are going to be going to West Wales um, UAV Centre, also called Nordoni Aerospace Centre. And you guys are going to be putting together aircraft and actually fly them around. So the aim of this session today is to show you, to give you a little bit of a flavor of what you're going to be doing and telling you what steps you need to take to make sure that you have a place reserved for the week that you want and to make sure that we can capture some of your requirements as well. So the objectives of this session. What is this flight test course um, that you're going to go in uh, this summer? Why are you doing it? Who's actually going to be teaching this thing? Are you actually going to be flying drones? And what do you need to do? And how does it all fit within your aerospace engineering degree? So to answer your first question, so what is this? The aerospace field course aims to introduce you to the professional practice of flight testing. It's about getting you in the mindset of aviators understanding that everything you do from now on carries a responsibility because as engineers they're trusting you that you are able to do things that you should be able to do and every time if you have any friends in medicine they're always talking about how you know it they have to make sure that everything they do is right because in their operating table they have a human life that depends on their ability to do things right if any of you go into civil aviation some of you might go into designing control system for large aircraft that fit three to four or five hundred people, your operating, your operating table could be five hundred people at any given time, and you could have multiples of them flying at any one time. So I would say you have an even greater responsibility to make sure that everything you do is right. And part of this uh, flight test course is to give you the confidence and the awareness that you are able to do all of these things with the knowledge that you have been gathering throughout um, your first and second year. And we will introduce topics like flight safety, describe the regulator. So if you want to do anything related to aerospace in the UK, you have to talk to the Civil Aviation Authority. You have to understand how the rules and regulations apply to you. You have to be able to understand how you put into practice health and um, safety considerations for experimenting or basically for everything you do. We're also going to be talking about aerospace systems. Um, you're going to identify the sensors and the avionics that goes into different types of aerospace vehicles. Um, not only you're going to see them, but you're actually going to use them. You're going to put it into practice. You're going to get data out of them. You're going to learn a little bit about experimental methods. So if you have a system that you want to test, how do you actually go about testing it? What kind of information is relevant? How you analyze that data in a meaningful way so that you can disseminate it to the people that you want to talk to. It's not the same explaining engineering results to the regulator or to your academic supervisor or to your boss in the future. They all want slightly different information and you have to learn how to make sure that you can convey the information that they actually want. And a little bit of personal development as well. So working as a team to make all of these things happen but also participate in our band activities. Um, examples of which uh, last year we went on running clubs and we also did a mountain bike um, test session in one of the local bike parks. So who's teaching this thing? So my name is Chris Kababe. I'm one of the lecturers in MACE. I started only a few years ago and I teach on, on the second year the flight test course, third year fly dynamics and your fourth year um, advanced group design um, together with Bill Crowder, Kieran Good and Nick Chris. Um, so myself um, I spent most of my research days actually applying the systems 
um, in interesting environments. So that picture was uh, the Etna volcano in Italy, and that is a large multi-rotor with an open path laser sensor that um, was developed to measure some of the, um, the concentrations within the plume of gases. Um, so I'm also a first data and your point of contact. So any questions that you have regarding the flight test course, send me an email first, and if it's not me who's gonna answer, I can direct you to the right person to talk to. In this course, we also have Bill Crowder, Professor Crowder, you would have seen him from um, your first year, um, from your first year modules. Uh, Professor Crowder also have a lot of experience designing and operating aircraft um, in the UK, um, one of which is MAGMA. Have you all seen MAGMA? Yeah, it's a, very, um, it's a very interesting aircraft. It's about 60 kilograms that was developed here at the university. And inside it has a lot of sensors and a lot of avionics, most of which are actually shared with the equipment that you're gonna be using. So by the time you finish this flight test course, if you go inside, if you go again to see magma and you open the lid, you're gonna be able to recognize every single system inside that aircraft. We also have Nick. Nick? here in the front. Do um, you want to talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, sure. So um, most of you probably haven't met me yet, but you will do uh, during the flight test course and next year because I teach on the conceptual aerospace uh, design course. Um, a lot of my experience in the past has been with, with spacecraft and what you can see up here is actually a 3U CubeSat that we launched as a university last year. And that was uh, doing some experiments in very low Earth orbit, looking at how to understand the gas surface interactions that happen with the residual atmosphere and novel materials that we developed here in the university. That's right. And um, that is actually the arm of the International Space Station. Yeah, yeah and that's the satellite coming of it. All right, we also have uh, Dr. Kieran Wood. Say hello, Kieran. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, give a similar introduction to uh, Nick. So, uh, yeah, I'm Kieran Wood. I've got a long history of researching everything to do with drones, lots of applied uh, situations of actually going and flying in the field, um, piloting and stuff. But then also lots of research projects about adding new sensors or new control systems or new actuators to drones to make them fly better or deal with unusual conditions a little bit better. You won't seen me much either. Um, in fact, this unit might be the first time you interact with me, so I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. Um, Kieran's got um, a, a, a gold star um, first data, so that means it's an enhanced first um, aid um, degree, and he's also got a GBC, which is the equivalent of a license that allows you to operate drones in, in specific conditions in populated areas, for example. So he's able to use large model, uh, sorry, large multi-rotors in congested areas, for example. Where was this picture taken? That's also at uh, Stromboli. Stromboli. Okay. Yep, and the lunchbox there. That's uh, also the gas sensor. There you go. So we all have a lot of experience actually applying the systems and taking them to interesting <coughs> places crushing them, breaking them, seeing them not work, and then eventually repairing them until they actually give you some meaningful results. And part of our motivation to create this field course is to give you a little bit of that, because as engineers, we feel that that is one of the most rewarding aspects um, of our degree. Not all the work that you're gonna be doing here in industry or, or whatever is gonna be sitting on your computer doing MATLAB scripts. Okay, so are you really gonna be flying drones? Yes. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. The rest of it um, will be a surprise. But I will tell you a little bit about some of the activities that you're going to be conducting. So the first one is... Oh, the sun is not coming on. Uh, imagine that with, a theme, with the Top Gun theme song. Uh, so your first activity is about building a glider using foam board led by Professor Crowder. So this is an icebreaker activity. Um, just making sure that you remember your trim stability, um, where to put the weights on the aircraft, where your neutral point is, where your center of gravity is. Um, a lot of this stuff you're gonna be doing this year for um, APD, so make sure you pay attention in class. 
So this is one of the evenings where all of the students were just trying the different designs that they were coming out, and then straight after finishing building the glider, then we would go on a walk to the dunes and to the beach nearby. Okay, so for, your, for one of the other activities, you're going to be introduced to multi-rotor drums, and the intention is to give you hands-on experience with not only the, the mechanical aspects of it, but the avionics as well. So part of your objectives here are going to be to actually put together the drone from a box of bits. You will be given no instructions, so same kind of instructions we get when we buy this thing from China. And you have to make sure all of the connections, all of the mechanical components are right, because if they're not right, what's going to happen? Crash. Okay? So last year we did have a couple of crash. They are part of the course. You will learn from them. But if you do crash, then we will ask you to do a root, a, a, um, a root analysis in order to understand what went wrong. Um, and then we'll go outside the airfield and actually fly them. For your second activity, let's try that again. There we go. So building a rocket another aerospace vehicle, and in here you'll get introduced to the dynamics of how you go about preparing a rocket for flight, but you'll also be introduced to electronics. How many of you have done programming before? Does MATLAB tools for engineers count? No, MATLAB does not count. Okay, I love your hands now, yeah. Excel doesn't count either. <laughs> Just, good. Yes, you'll be, you'll be taught um, some of the basics of programming. And this is not only programming. So of you who have programmed, how many of you have done it for interacting with a physical object or a microcontroller? Okay, so the list is now even smaller. Okay, so by the end of the session, you all will have experience in doing that. Anything you want to say about the... No? Keep it a surprise? Has anyone watched the rocket before? No. How many of you have flown a multi-rotor before? Okay, a couple. Yeah. That's all right. And then the third activity is going to be about preparing a fixed-wing drone uh, for takeoff and testing as well. So again, you'll be given a box of bits with no instructions, and you have to prepare that aircraft for flight, which is not only means making sure all of the connections, guys, sorry, keep, keep up with me for a couple more minutes, not making sure that all of the connections and all of the mechanical fixings are done properly. Um, you'll also get introduced to health and safety and human factors. Uh, but also validation and verification. So what happens if a fixed-wing aircraft tries taking off with the CG in the wrong place? Do you know how to get, how to, um, get the CG of an aircraft? No? Okay, by the end of this session, you'll all be able to do that. Okay? Um, it will involve some math as well and some experimentation, and the end result should be that you successfully fly the aircraft. How many of you have flown fixed-wing aircraft before? Okay, how many of you have flown a seven kilo or greater fixed-wing aircraft before? Okay, that's good. How many of you have flown a 25,000 pound fixed-wing aircraft before? Okay, that's roughly how much the kit is, and we're trusting that in your hands. So hopefully, you are paying attention in your modules this year. So what do you need to do now to make sure you're prepared for the summer? You're doing it right now. Make sure you're attending lectures, make sure you're paying attention and understanding what the lecturers are conveying because it all leads back to this. Okay? And the experience you get today, to, that you get this year and at the flight test course is actually going to set you up for the next couple of years as well. Okay? So space systems, pay attention, structures, APD particularly, fluid dynamics, your workshop practices, making sure that if you haven't done it, um, if, if you've never done work with your hands as such before, 
um, practice doing that as well. Data acquisition and experimental methods, dynamics, all of that you're going to get to use this summer. So what do we want you to do now? So how many of you have been to the Blackboard site for this module? Some of you, okay, that's all right. So in a few minutes, we're actually gonna op we're gonna open up the window for registration. Uh, what I want you to do is to actually do it here and now. So, not right, right now. So there is two potential days for going to Wales. The first week straight after exams from the 12th to the 16th of June. Sorry guys, just a couple more minutes. And then there is a second week straight after that from the 19th to the 23rd of June. So think about which of the weeks you want to do. And then we're going to open up the registration so that you can, you can register. So the way we're going to do that is you have to register into a group. Once the group is full, that's it. The only way to change from one week to another is if you find someone in the other group waiting to join with you. Is that clear? All right. So I'm going to give you five minutes now to think about which of, the, which of the weeks you want to go. And in five minutes, I'm going to open up the registration live. You're going to see me doing it, so don't try doing it just yet. After, after you finish selecting your preferred week, then we need you to complete the registration, which is essentially where you tell us what you're allergic to, amongst other things to make sure that we don't include that in the catering options. There's also some documentations for you to review. You don't have to do it right now. You can do it later, but you do need to see them before you go out. And those are the handbook, which explains what the activity is. Guys, you're not going to be able to register yet, so can I have your attention, please? Thank you. In the handbook, you're going to see the frequently asked questions and also um, recommended packing list, so the stuff that you should bring with you. Have you all been to, has anyone here been to Wales before? Has anyone been here been camping to Wales before? How many of you have never been camping before? Okay, a fair few of you. So make sure you read that document, especially the packing list. Any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna give you five minutes to discuss and think about which of the weeks you wanna do, and then I'll open up the registration.
told that, you would have been told earlier this year by Mark Quinn that you're not to fa book travel until you know which week you're going out on. So saying, I bought tickets for this date, is no excuse if you didn't manage to get into the group you wanted. The only way for trading places is if you can find someone in the other group willing to trade. Is that clear? Okay. So... Registrations open.
wish to be a third person adding to it. So you will have a tent, you'll have a sleeping mat, you'll get a sleeping bag, and you'll get a pillow, and a bottle, and there will be some torches, or like lanterns available as well. Okay, so you don't have to bring or buy any of that stuff. Um, the tent thing is one person per tent. If you want to bring your own tent because you have been camping before and you want to use your equipment, that's absolutely fine. Uh, for travelling, we travel there via coach and back. If you want to drive yourself, in. That is, there is also an option for that, but parking has to be of the air side, uh, unless you have specific air side insurance, uh, which I doubt any, unless you try to
have uh, land red land yards available. If you don't want to be photographed during that specific day, just wear the land yard and then put on the pictures of you that day. And then if you change your mind next morning, then that's going to be mine as well. Okay? Is everyone okay with that? Okay? So some of the pictures, or most of the pictures, are actually available on that board. So if you go to Blackboard on the report information where the unit investigation is, there is a link to the Google Post to ask you to ask you.
Um, see you guys later.
Hello. Hi. Let's hope for slightly better luck with the projectors this week. Visualizer. 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 Visualiz